Welcome to the 12 Days of Christmas Wonder podcast. We're so excited you're here. If you're new, welcome. And if you have yet to subscribe, go ahead and do so now. That way you know when the next episode airs. Winter officially starts today, and Christmas is four days away. I was listening to some Christmas songs and thinking about how fast time is going. When the song, Christmas is Coming, The Goose is Getting Fat, popped into my head. It's a song I grew up with, and it actually turns out it's an old English poem, and it talks about charity, something that is also important at this time of year. If you're not familiar with it, this is how it goes. Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat. Please put a penny in the old man's hat. If you haven't got a penny, a hay penny will do. If you haven't got a hay penny, God bless you. As I was thinking about that, it made me also think about how commercialized Christmas has come. Then I stumbled upon a book called Laura's Holidays by Henrietta R. Elliott. In the book, six-year-old Laura is learning about the different holidays that occur throughout the year. The Christmas one struck a chord with me, so I thought I'd share it with you. Grab your favorite holiday drink, a warm blanket, and settle in. Laura's Holidays, Chapter 12, Christmas One day, about two months before Christmas, Laura was sitting alone in the nursery. She had emptied her money bank into her lap and was counting the money and crying. Just then, her sister Kate came into the room. Why, Laura, she said, what is the matter? Come, tell me about it, and perhaps I can help you. Laura was always glad to tell her trouble to Kate, so she said, Oh, sister, I was just thinking about Christmas. Nettie Quimby said today that her papa was going to give her ten dollars to buy Christmas presents with, and she's going to give her mama a beautiful book and the prettiest things she can find to the rest, and I've been thinking what I'd give and counting my money, and I've only got five dimes and seven nickels and thirteen cents and I've got more people to give presents to than she has, and I love them so much, especially Papa and Mama. And Nettie says I can't get anything for grown people without lots of money. As Laura said this, she began to cry again, but her sister Kate comforted her very quickly. You are right, she said, in thinking we give presents to show our love. Now, if I can find you a way to make little presents show more love than big ones, won't you like the little presents best? Why, yes, said Laura, but I don't see, sister, how little presents can show more love than big ones. Kate smiled. You see, she said, when Nettie takes that money and buys things, all she does about the present is to walk to the store, and that little walk is all she really gives. She don't do anything to earn the money, Her papa did that. So the presents are really more from him than her. But if you take your money and buy some bits of ribbon and worst it and make some pretty presents, you will be giving ever so much work besides the money you have been saving a little at a time for so long. And I'm sure papa and mama and the rest of us would a great deal rather have little things you really made than the biggest thing in the stores that someone only gave you money to buy. I will fix your work for you and show you how to do it. And by doing a little every day, you can make a present for everybody before Christmas. Don't you think that will be nice? Yes, said Laura. Can you go with me today to get the things? Kate said yes, if their mama didn't need her, and they went that afternoon. On the way, they talked of what the presents should be so as to know what to buy. Something was thought of for Papa and Mama and grandparents, and Brother John and Baby Ralph. But, said Laura, what shall I do about your present, sister? You can't show me about that, for then you'll know. I've thought of a nice plan for that, too, said Kate. You know John's present is to be a pen wiper. Now, I need one, too, and after I've shown you how to make John's, you can make one for me, and I shall enjoy seeing how well you made it alone, more than a surprise. This pleased Laura, and when they had bought what was needed, they hurried home, and she began to work that very afternoon. And from then till Christmas, every afternoon from four till half past, Laura worked on her presents. 
Oh, how happy Laura was when Christmas came. And when she saw how happy she had made everyone, she said, Oh, Sister Kate, I'm so sorry Nettie hasn't a dear sister like you to show her how to make presents. I'm afraid she hasn't had near as happy a Christmas as I have. The End Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little story. It's a great reminder of the real importance of Christmas, love and generosity for one another. I look forward to sharing a new story with you tomorrow. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And see you tomorrow.